Hi, I'm Sonnet, and I'm with Sonnet's Garden Blooms. I want to welcome you all to my channel. Today, we are going to do a thrift to treasure video uh, where I take items that I've thrifted and I flip them. So I'm going to bring you along and show you those items. Uh, it's going to be another focus on cottage core. Uh, that is a huge design decor um, aesthetic right now. So we're going to use that as the theme of the whole video. Uh, but I do have an announcement at the end. I want to thank one of um, the subscribers, our YouTube uh, watchers that made a comment on my video that helped me brainstorm over the weekend. And I am going to make an announcement of something I'm going to be doing a little different. So watch for that at the end of the video. But I am going to start um, flipping now. So I found these three crocs i guess is what you could call them that's my vision for these initially i tried to stamp directly on this glossy finish and it did not work out at all i literally tried i would say 15 times and every time it smeared so we're going to spray these with this two times ultra matte flat finish and i'm going to show you how great it works so I finished these up and you can see I used that spray paint like I showed you earlier to spray them all, even the, the bottoms and the insides. Um, that spray paint holds up really well, uh, even on that glossy, um, the glossiness of this. So um, really loving it. Um, so I, I, I know I use the crockery stamps or I have in the past. But honestly, I love them. So I'm gonna use a crockery stamp on each one of these. Initially, I had thought of um, numbering them with, and I could still even do that, um, put a number on each one as well uh, with the um, IOD typesetting stamp. Uh, if you, This is one of my favorites. I love it because you get all the big capital letters then you also get all the lowercase, oh my gosh, I'm losing these, and these numbers as well. So um, I'm, I'll think about it for a sec and we'll see what I decide um, we're gonna do. So that didn't work how I wanted it. I thought I was videotaping and I wasn't. So I am going to just recap what I did. Uh, I actually took these, these are completely painted white. I used my IOD stamps from the crockery and um, these are, like I was saying, um, one of my favorite set of stamps. And I know that they were out for so long, but I've been hearing that they're back in stock. I still have yet to receive my first shipment so I apologize as soon as it's available, I will get the, you know, all the stamps, um, the inks, everything out. So, um, but what I did here is I just took my IOD um, black ink pad and I flipped um, the stamp over. If you haven't used any of the IOD stamps yet, uh, to prep them, when you receive them, you pull off the backing and you just take a fine grit sandpaper and rough up the actual um, stamps themselves, just uh, sand them gently, and that preps them for the ink. Uh, then you just take your ink pad. What I do is I like to store my ink pads uh, ink down so it brings all the ink to the surface of the actual pad, and then just take it and then dab, dab, dab all over. Um, and then when you use these, you just centerize the actual um, stamp on there and then you put it down on the surface. And then what I do is I just try to rub on both sides as is. And then when I pull it off, it will be um, completely stamped. It is much easier to stamp on a surface that is not slick um, than one that is very slick. So when these were that tan color prior, I tried to stamp on them because I thought, oh, they still look like a crock in a way. I had to erase, erase, erase multiple times. It wasn't like three tries and I was out. 
I did it like 10 times. And finally, that's when I came up with spraying these this white and then stamping. And now what I'm gonna do is do a clear coat on these to seal it all in. Um, even though these are permanent, I always just like to do a clear coat just to give it a, a quick one last coat to prevent uh, you know, any chipping or anything like that, or help prevent chipping, I should say. Um, but it will be set to go, and that's what this one turned out to be looking like. Uh, the small one, and then the large one. So, so here I found this metal basket. It actually, after I painted it and was distressing it, I realized it reminded me of an Easter basket. Uh, I did spray it with that white two times ultra matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. It was so much easier than painting with the chalk paint, trying to get into each one of those grooves. Uh, I did two coats of paint. I'm taking uh, just a medium grit sand block, distressing it, and then I am going to, after I'm done distressing, give it a good clear coat just to, uh, again, um, do that one final coat just to make it um, seem complete. I love how this basket turned out, and it does remind me of a little Easter basket, but I think it will be a great small item to have in my booth. And these metal bas or these metal trays and items um, that I paint with the white and then distress, they seem to go over really well. So it's like been a hot item for me. So I absolutely love it. I think it's going to go great in my booth. So our next item, I found this sign and I really grabbed it because I loved the birds with the little rack um, or like little hangers on it. So what I'm doing is I'm unscrewing it and on the back, there's some metal pieces where it's wired in. So I'm taking a uh, a little wire clippers and I'm gonna clip it to remove it from the actual sign. I will not use that piece at all. I'm actually going to take a vintage um, board like a, an old uh, reclaimed piece of board, actually a leftover piece from the mantle that I just did, uh, just an extra piece that was laying around in the garage. So I'm gonna uh, take that and we're gonna add that to that board. So here is the board that I um, had in my pile of scrap. It's actually an extra piece from the mantle I just made. So what I did is I took a sander um, and I sanded it all down, rounded the edges a bit, just to clean it all up, just like I did with um, the actual mantle. And then I'm taking the Rust-Oleum's chalked uh, paint and I'm just sporadically just whitewashing this or just, uh, it will not be a full coverage, just kind of randomly um, painting on it um, and after this then what I will do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, after it dries and I'm going to sand it I give it a good sanding but um, this is a great way to make it look um, just you know distressed like it's been painted and aged all in one so my next item we're gonna finish here um if you remember this distressed piece of board and then our little birds so i'm going to eye it up i probably should turn it so i can see it yep i'm glad i did that okay so i'm gonna eye it up get it on here and we are going to take some screws and screw it in and there you have it and I absolutely love how it turned out I think this might be one of my favorites <laughs> so I found this old crock it didn't have a top or any markings on the bottom so I decided to use a crockery stamp and add something to jazz it up. Uh, this was definitely a learning experience for me. So earlier in the video, you saw how I took that towel and I rolled it up and I used that to hold the object. I wish I would have done that with this 
because it rolled and then I didn't get it stamped correctly so I had to wipe it off and uh, with the actual inks a lot of um, comments that I've been getting asked is are you know are the inks permanent can I wash them once these actually dry they are permanent but prior to that you do have an opportunity when it's still wet to wipe it off as quick you know with a baby wipe so uh second time around i'm trying to eye this up it's still wobbly a bit i used my candles to try to hold it in place uh then it, it kind of when i'm trying to stamp it slips so i wipe it off again uh, so this is definitely, um, highly recommend a towel, guys. Definitely recommend that. Um, and the third time, thank goodness, was a charm. And I was able to then re-ink my pad this time around and then go ahead and then get a good um, image transferred onto it. So I think, uh, you know, even though I've done this for a while, this was a little bit more of a slicker surface. And like I spoke about on the other Crocs that I did, uh, when it's a little bit slicker, it's a little bit trickier. So I got it this time. I, I did have to uh, just touch up a little bit on each side, but overall it turned out awesome. So I found this platter and it's made out of like a heavier type of concrete in a way. Um, it's just real thick and heavy duty. Uh, and I am going to do something different. Uh, I've been doing a lot of white lately for some of my smalls and blue has been selling great in my booth. I was at Sherwin-Williams this last weekend and I found this blue indigo indigo batik is what it's called and I absolutely loved it and uh, it was actually in a, the mist tints. Uh, I haven't been able to find any mist tints lately. Uh, Sherwin-Williams is actually having a shortage of paint right now so um, I went in the color that I actually wanted to buy. They could only give me an, uh, a quart versus a gallon. So um, I did find this as well and I'm going to show you what it looks like painted up. All right, so here is the blue. I, oh gosh, I just loved it. I, I cannot wait to use this on more pieces as well. Um, it does remind me a little of that Rust-Oleum's um, blue that I have been using as well, but that's in a chalk paint. Um, this one does come with the primer in it along with the paint. Um, it, it just goes on so nice and it is that satin finish that I really do like. So I am going to put two coats on this on the front and two coats on the back and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next to it. Now that the piece is dry, I'm going to use the Waverly White Wax and I am going to fill in uh, and pull out all this detail. The actual piece has, um, because it is like a concrete, it's got a lot of like crevices and so the white wax really brings out all that great detail of it. Um, so I love love how the white wax um, definitely pulls that out and then I am going to um, even do the actual base of it right there and uh, but I'm going to take and wipe some of that white off I don't want it as white as that because I do plan on um, actually stamping a saying across the front of it and I really want that to pop so I want the blue to come out just a tad more on the actual um, base of it. So I initially was going to stamp one of the farmhouse animals on here. I did I first did the cow and I did not like it. Then I thought maybe it's because of the image I just didn't like the cow. So then I did the sheep and I did not like it. So I decided we're, because we're doing like a, a farmhouse cottage theme today, I'm just gonna type, or I'm gonna type, I'm gonna use uh, the actual stamps from the typesetting 
and we're gonna write or stamp out cottage. So we are still going to use the white ink and we're gonna just do the white ink on here. So I spaced it out because I only have one T. I did space it out so that we can go back and do both. So how I did this is I laid out the letters first, then I put the whole piece down, I picked them all up on the piece, and here we go. All right, and you guys know I'm a terrible multitasker. Talking and stamping are not my forte. All right, so I like how that all turned out. So let's wipe these off. Okay, so got those and we're gonna just, I'm gonna pop them off real quick here. And we're just gonna use the T again. I just like to clean the stamps right away. All right, we're gonna re-ink the T. And we're going to put it on there. Perfect, I love it. I love, love, love now how that turned out. I was not liking it initially, but I think it's turned out great now. Now I'm gonna clear coat it after it dries. So this is dry now. So what we're going to do is uh, use my, the Minwax uh, clear acrylic um, and I'm using satin today. So I found these two sconces. I absolutely loved them. I've been looking for more sconces or types of uh, things that I can hang on the wall as decorative pieces. So when I found these two, I grabbed them up right away. I knew initially that I wanted to spray them white. And I had this vision where I was going to put a wood piece or a piece of round wood on top. But there were these two balls, or three balls, I should say. You can kind of see them. And unfortunately, that did not work out. So uh, in the end, I had to remove the glue that I used and fix them up. But here you can see I'm distressing them, allowing the black um, to come through uh, and just make it look a little bit more aged. Um, I do like that distressed look. Uh, but I know some don't, so I did have, uh, I did show you what they look like prior to doing the distressing. But here you can see I'm going to distress all the um, areas of the actual sconce. And then in the end, I do apply a clear coat just to seal it all in. So here I found this eight pack of these charger plates. And I absolutely loved them because they had metal and the wicker all in one. Uh, I definitely got a really good deal on these. And in the past, I found just the wicker charger platters like this. And I made hanging shelves with them. So that's what I'm going to do with these. And I'm going to show you how I do that. All right, well, I found these charger plates. So in the past, what I have done, uh, I found some really pretty wicker ones and I actually drilled like three holes in the wicker and then I strung through some rope and I created like hanging shelves. And they all sold really, really quick. These are great um, items that I hang from my pergola. Uh, in my booths and I display items on it. So, uh, and uh, one of them I'll put a plant on another, I will hang um, or I, I can put my book sets on there. So just a lot of my smalls fit on there really nice. And um, I, I think they make great um, pieces in anyone's home as well. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna see. 
Let's see, where would I do this? So here, here, and here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, I'm gonna have to do it a little differently than what I did on my last one. All right, so we're gonna just have, and I'm gonna cut three pieces of rope Yeah. Okay. And we're going to try to make all the pieces of roughly the same length. Okay. All right. But these turned out awesome the last time and I sell I sold the last ones for roughly $18 each and uh, they sold pretty quick so So I tied off the three pieces. So you can see there's one, two, and three. And then now I'm gonna bring them all together. And it's kind of hard to show this because of how I'm videotaping, but I'm gonna try to make it stand it up so that, or get it up and level it off so that there it looks very level, like, that looks pretty good. And then on top, I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot. And then, so you can see like the knots like that, and it's a hanging, then it hangs. So what do you guys all think? Did you enjoy it? Did you learn something? What was your favorite piece of the whole flip? I personally, <clears throat> I think I loved the plate the best. I am absolutely loving working with blues. I have found that they are moving really quickly in my booths. And uh, that brings me to my announcement. So one of uh, the subscribers recently did ask a question about the blues that I use in my booths, what's selling, um, what are the hot colors, tell me a little bit more about them. And that led me to think like, well, I can't really give her all the nitty gritty details just on a comment. I mean, my post would be like a mile long. 
So I thought since I'm releasing videos on Mondays and Fridays now, I can do uh, maybe like not every week, but when I do get some good questions on Wednesdays, I will just do a quick video and we're gonna keep these. I, I don't want it to be a long drown out hour video or anything like that. I wanna be quick, straight to the point, talk about the topic. So Wednesday, we are gonna talk about everything you need to know about paint, the paint colors, like the blues and or what, you know, and I guess what I'm gonna call it, my husband came up with this idea, what do you wanna know Wednesdays? So I'm going to put a post out on the, um, the community page and I'm going to ask you, my viewers, what do you want me to talk about? What questions would you ask me that I could kind of surround a topic about? So this Wednesday is going to be about painting and we're gonna kind of go around the blues and like those types of colors um, and what's been working for me and we're gonna just dive into that topic. So if you haven't been to my channel before, I'm all about DIY, flipping. Um, it's really about the, the day in the life of a small business owner. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. So when I do release a video, you do get notified so you can watch them right away. And um, go ahead, like this video um, if it is something that you did like, and then make a comment. Let me know what, again, was your favorite item. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you, I guess, Wednesday. Bye.